Hello, hello everybody and uh, welcome again and welcome to the people at home and welcome to the people here. Toda Rabba, thank you for coming. Uh, we know Parashat Ki Tetze, Ki Tetze Le Milchama, we're going to war. Tetze Le Milchama, we're going to war. So the war that we're talking about, it's not exactly the physical war with people and we're fighting someone. We are talking about different type of war. And the war that we're talking about is a war usually before the Rosh Hashanah. It's a war with our inclination. With the Yetzirah, with the, with the issue we have. Every person born with some issues. Whoever is not born with issues don't belong in this world. If you cannot find what your issue is, you're lying to yourself or you're egomaniac. You have to choose which side are you. You're a liar or egomaniac. If you say, I'm a perfect human being, then why are you here? What are you doing here? What's your purpose here? <laughs> you if God have nothing else to do to send you on vacation to planet Earth, Planet Earth is the first level of Tikkun. There's nine more to go. This is where we are, Asiya. We are here at Asiya. Lasot, we are here to do some action. So some of us sometimes feel we don't, we're not happy enough. We don't have enough money. We don't have the right soul, man. No, things are not working. Work on Asiya. Don't work on the mind. Don't work on changing something in your mind, in your meditation. In Judaism, the main thing is what you're doing. It's not what you're thinking. It's not about thinking. It's about doing. Doing is the name of the game. Unfortunately, we see a lot of people around that are struggling, struggling here, struggling in different countries, struggling in the job, struggling in a lot, a lot of things. The answer for all that struggle has to come with lack of action. You can call it laziness. You can call it whatever you want. But in the end of the day, it's lack of action. If you don't have enough money, it's because you don't want enough money. Simple. You want to know why you don't have enough money? You don't want it. Simply, you don't. What are you ready to do for making a lot of money? What are you ready to do? <laughs> if you don't uh, have uh, the soul med, the badzug, benzug, you don't want it yet. Now, people will not believe me if I tell them it all depends on the ratzon. All ratzon, all about the desire. Are you ready to get humiliated one year to get what you want? No? So you're not ready to get what you want. Because you're... Pride is more important than what you want. Think about it. What are you ready to do to get rid of it? So, when you go to a war, you have to make a decision. <laughs> are you ready to go to war? Are you ready to die for the cause? Or you kind of, uh, let me try it and then I can have a chocolate milk later on tonight. No, no, no. You're going for the war, you don't know if you come back. You're going for it. You're going for finding soulmate, you're going for it. You're going for a job, you're going for it. Everything you have to go for it. The worst enemy of human being is what? No. Doubt. Doubt is the worst enemy of a human being. Nothing is worse than a doubt in a human brain. If an evil attack you, well, you know it's evil. Everybody knows it's evil. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato writes in the, his Sefer, and he writes that if you're in a dark room, you know how to careful from a dark room. If you're in a room with light, you know what to do in a room with light. But if you're in a room that is half light and half dark, you don't know what to do. You're very confused. That's the doubt. The doubt is never for sure. And it's never, it's always maybe, always maybe, maybe, maybe. So in his book, Mesilat Yesharim, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato writes that when you walk into a place where it is actually, you're not sure, you lost already. You lost. But when you walk into a situation that even you're not sure, but you act as if you are sure, you won even if you lost. It's a very deep idea that you need to understand. It's a very deep. Again, the enemy number one of a human being is nothing more than what? What did I say? What is it? Doubt. doubt. As how you say doubt in Hebrew? How do you say uh, uh, the, in Gimatria of Safek? What else we can say? Amalek. Amalek. You want to fight the Amalek. What is the Amalek? What is the Milchama with Dor Dor? Dor Dor, you have a fight with Dor generation, generation. With what? What is Amalek? My doubts. Doubts about me. Doubts about people. And doubts about God. Three types of doubts you have to eliminate. 
He cannot think you're not capable of something. If Hashem created you in the Tzelem Elohim Bara Otcha, He created you in the image of God, you are a creator. You can arrange everything to work for you. But if it's not working, there is a master of, uh, I don't know if it's Kung Fu or Karate in South Africa. A Jewish guy, he moved, he moved to Boroka. Forgive me that I don't remember his name. And he, he does a certain movement that I don't fully understand. And uh, he became religious in South Africa, and then he moved to Borough Park. And he does all kind of movement, like this. And then he doesn't punch you, <laughs> he touch. I have to bring the student of his, I know his student. And he touch your lips, and then your lips will <laughs> become like that, as if he punch you. I, I, <laughs> he doesn't punch, it's an energy thing. I don't fully understand it, but he, he does. So he teach. That if a person, of course, don't try it at home, please. Don't try it at home. This is something I heard, but don't try it. So he teach that if a person is stabbed with a knife, they don't die from the knife. They die because they think they need to die from the knife. But again, don't try it at home. Don't try it at home. I say it. Ra camera. Say it. Don't try it at home. Okay? I'm just saying what, it, what he say in his lecture, which is an unbelievable concept. So think about it. Doubts. What type of doubts do you have in your life? That's your war. This week, this is your war. What kind of doubt? Do you believe you can marry your soulmate if you're not married? Do you believe you can get any type of money you can get? Do you believe, if you don't believe in it, then don't try it. Don't try to make money that you don't believe you can make it. Don't try to get married to your soulmate when you don't believe you can. <laughs> That's why it's a key to tell him, What is the milchama? Amalek midol door. That's the milchama. That's the war you have to have. The war on the doubts is the only war you have, not the war of evil, not the war on the evil inclination. The evil inclination is very tricky. It's not going to tell you it's bad. If somebody will come and tell you, I'm going to give you something which is very bad for you, would you take it? No. But if somebody tell you, I have something for you, they say it's good, but uh, a side effect, uh, not sure. Once you take it, you're very confused if you hurt yourself or if you help or if you hurt yourself. Help or hurt, you're not sure. That's a doubt, my friend. So parasha azot in this parasha, all about the Amalek. Be careful. Safek is the number of our enemy. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, right now you're a little tired. You know, you're going, sometimes you park your car, but you don't remember where you park your car. There is a certain age, there's a certain age you, you don't remember. And you have uh, you have that things on the car. I didn't have car for a while now. But it used to be on the car, the, I forget what you call it, panic, I think it's called. You press on it and you look for the car, but you need to be close enough to the car or in the right floor to find it. So if I park the car in the airport in 2A and uh, there is another 2A kind of at the fourth floor because it's repeating itself and I'm pressing and nothing going on. So now I have to find the floor and I have to find the place. Doubts. Doubts, doubts. It's the only enemy we have. Only enemy. You want to know why you're not happy? Doubts. Do you know that people with no doubts are happy? And people with doubts are miserable if they have everything? They're riding their private yacht and private jet, but they're not sure they got it right. So they have billions of dollars, and they have the beautiful yacht, and they have beautiful children, beautiful wife, beautiful husband, beautiful ocean, beautiful, beautiful, up in the morning with doubts, they go to sleep with doubts, and they have no idea why they're sad. Simple because you're downing. A person who is capable to enjoy sitting in a place, I don't know, an ice cream, and you take a spoon of the ice cream and you put it in the cup and you take that whatever chocolate vanilla and you put it into your mouth. It's great. Right? Great. Unfortunately, that's how people eat ice cream. I don't know what to do tomorrow. <laughs> I have some problem. I think yesterday what he said to me was wrong. Nobody eats ice cream anymore. Nobody eats ice cream. People have no idea where their brain is. That's why I love to see and watch uh, children when they eat ice cream. Oh, the best. The best. They are into the ice cream. There's nothing else exists. Nothing. Zero existing. They into the ice cream. If you take people who are uh, uh, artists, for example, if you met ever artists, they really, when they do the art, they're into the art. There's nothing else. They're in. Like a person, I don't know if you met a real uh, piano player. 
uh, there is a wonderful guy named um, Mori Adari, you should see his show, is a guy from Flatbush, who becomes super famous, super famous, so the first show he did, I was living at that time in Santa Monica, and we have Debbie and me at a place like that, and he said, can I do my first show here? I said, the show is small, I mean, what are you gonna do? See, I, uh, he came and he played the piano. Oh, this guy's into the piano, and now he's doing show all over the world, you can look him up. Amazing show, amazing, but he's in, there's nothing else exists. Second thing that happening in this parasha, it's a Veraita Isha Yafa. You're going to war, right? The war on the doubts. Now you see a beautiful woman. Tell us the Mekubalim, the Kabbalists are telling us it's not a woman. We don't talk about beautiful woman. We talk about your Neshama, your soul. Veraita Isha Yafa. You want to know who is the Isha Yafa? Your Neshama, your soul. And then he, she has to do her hair, go into the salon, she has to do her nails. Then from there you learn that women, hair and nails is number one thing. This and that, then they're happy. This is no good, this is no good, we have a problem. All right, Baruch Hashem. I grew up with three sisters, and I, I'm not from this generation, right? I'm from generation before. And the generation before, women used to put themselves in a microwave. I forgot the name for it. They put themselves in a plastic that has a heat. I don't know the name for it. It's like... It's it's like a microwave. It's a have a heat. Uh, it's a it's a something like like a microwave. They put themselves, my sister and my mother, before bar mitzvah, maybe three hours. Not joking, three hours in that thing until the air has to be perf like sitting. And and remember, we go into a chatuna to a wedding, and my sister uh, was standing a little bit to the left, and she keep putting it down and standing. My God, she didn't want to go. And I would never get it. Why women are putting it down? So what? What's the big deal? I mean, Baruch Hashem. You look at men when they go to a wedding, they all look like penguin. Nobody cares. You see two women wearing the same dress, they're going to kill each other. What happened? I mean, what, what's the difference? In Kabbalah, they teach you your style of your hair, by the way. Most of you don't know. Define what type of personality you have. The color of your hair defines how you're going to behave. Women psychically know that. They know that this is the language of the body. What is curly mean? What is straight? What is blonde? What is black? Everything means something. It's in Zohar Yitro. In Parashat Yitro, it's all written there. That you can tell about the person. You're going on a date, you look at their hair, you know what it is. Of course, if they make it this way or that way, also it means something. I'm not going to go into Pirushim right now. It's a whole lecture by itself. So the idea, my friend, the Ra'ita Ishai Afa, meaning that you see your soul. You see a soul. And it says, and the soul is crying for a father. Father means Look at the story go. It don't talk about a woman. It talk about Kadosh Baruch Hu. She's crying because she's so far. But like Achtel Betai, you take the soul into your house, into your body. You bring him in. You start making it beautiful. You start making it connect to God, through Shabbat, through mitzvot, through ma'asim tovim, through good action, through good behavior. You develop the soul to become better and better every day. This week, parasha has so many mitzvot, so many ideas of how to behave if you follow it, of course, if you follow it. The mitzvah after that, I'm going through the mitzvot so you know what, what we're dealing with, is a weird mitzvah. It's actually the weirdest mitzvah in the entire Torah. And it's go like this. Ki ikare ken tzipor lefanecha. If randomly or if purposely, you're going to meet a nest of a bird, and what you have to do, you have to get kick the mother out and and take the chicks into you and you will have a long life. How can that be? The Zohar asks, how can that be? The Sefer Zohar Shoel, how can that be? So the Zohar explains in a Pshat Sod, there is Sod Sod and Pshat Sod. The Zohar said in the Pshat that because the bird is crying right now for her children, so if the bird is crying for her children, awakening a mercy, and that don't wake the mercy for the whole world. It's, it's a nice answer, and maybe we can accept it. Or we can go to Tikkuni Azor. In the Agdama of Tikkuni Azor, in Pasuk Yudzayim, Agdama of Tikkuni Azor, it's a loti kachaem alabanim. There is basically three aspects to the nest. There is three aspects of the nest. Sometimes it's a betim. Everybody know what betim is? Eggs. Gozalim. You know what gozalim? Chicks. Very good. And banim. 
sons. So they show you that the birds has three conditions. Three conditions. Betzim, Gozalim, Banim. Most people who read the Torah on a regular basis don't even know it's there. Three situations that we're dealing with when we're dealing with the nest. I give you another secret. The name where Mas the Messiah is, where Messiah is hiding, has a name. His chamber called Ken Tzipo, nest of the birds. That's where he is. If you want to know where, if you want to look for him, Ken Tzipo. That is the place of the Messiah. So what is he telling us? Valem namar vaem rovetz ata laefrochim or la betzim shalach te shalach meem. Aval al balek kabala namar lo tikach em al abanim. There is three condition. If it's eggs, you can take the mother away. If it's chicks, you can take the mother away. But if it's banim, if it's sons, lo tikach em al abanim. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai himself, himself in this perush, say there is something more here. It cannot be talking about the nest of the bird. And he say, to understand that, we need to understand the three positions of a human being. We, us. You, you can either be egg, chicks, or sons. This is called the development of a spiritual human being. You can have a big yarmulke and a religious Jew and long beer and tzitzit outside, inside, extra tefillin, three type of tefillin, Baruch Hashem, but still you are eggs. Why you are eggs? Because you didn't develop yourself from the moment you were born. You're born a certain way and you die the same way. You didn't develop in between. The development, the lack of development called eggs. Why is it called eggs? It's like ubar, like a fetus. Okay? Ubar, baby, emo, a fetus is not been developed. There is nothing there. He cannot give to no one. Can you go to the woman who's pregnant and hit on her belly and say, hey, can you ask uh, your son to, to give me the money you owe me? Does it sound stupid to you? It sounds stupid, right? What if 20 years from now, that person who's going to be born named Yossi is going to owe you $20,000 and you can see the future. Can you hit the stomach still? No. That's called the egg. What is Gozalim? Gozalim, Gozalim. I'm reading it to you. I want to read it to you. Gozalim is the able almost to fly on their own, but they need their mother. So they have to stay in the nest. They're not fully developed. So those, those people, if it's us, meaning we get it. We are a bit spiritual. We a bit get the idea. But we're selfish. We think about ourselves. Then what is Banim? Ah, Banim is fully developed already. Banim is fully developed. Lo tikachaim ala Banim. On Banim, say, ah, ah, you cannot take the mother if you have Banim, if it's fully developed. Who is the Ima? Who is this Ima we're talking about? It talk about the Shekhinah itself. Darke Ashkina. What is the Zohar? What is the Zohar trying to tell us? What do you think? Betzim, Gozalim, Vebanim. That if you're fully developed, then Hashem will never leave you? Never leave you. Never leave you. Never leave you. Never leave you. And you have to remember that. Never leave you. Maze Banim, look what this is what I said. Em ba'ale kabala shusod mochin gmurim begadlut. Da'inu banim gdolim kol tzarcham. Right now, when you come here, I'm teaching you basically Parashat Shavua. But here and there, as you can see, I put Zohar, I put Tikkun Zohar. Every time I give you Tikkun Zohar, Zohar, your Neshama, your soul, is start to become Banim. You become Banim automatically. Just by missing one word from the Zohar. Because the Zohar has something called Or Mekif. A Or Mekif Bechaye et Agadlut Shal Neshama. The Or Mekif, the surrounding light, is resurrecting a side of me that need to be fully developed. A person has to ask themselves, am I egg? Am I gozal, chicks? Or am I banim? You have to ask yourself that question every day. How do you know that? How do you know? In Kabbalah, we divide it to three levels. You have to remember that. One called ibur. Ibur means pregnancy. One called yenika, means breastfeeding. And one called mochin. Mochin means livelihood or lives. 
It's the same as baby being developed. The Ibur is when you are inside your mother and she's pregnant with you. That's called Ibur. This, this level called Nefesh. In that level, you cannot share nothing. You can only receive. Receive, receive, receive. So you have nothing to give. What happened in Yenika? Yenika is the, the next level. In Yenika and breastfeeding, you can't share with your mother anything besides when you smile when you come to get the milk. You kind of smile, but she has to bring you up from where? From the tabur, where you were as a baby, and lift you to what we call Chagat, it's called Tiferet, to the place of Tiferet in Kabbalah. She lifts you up. That's called Yenika. This is a development from one level to another. What happened when you grow up after two years? You cannot do breastfeeding after two years, as you know. After two years, it's called Mohin. The baby starts developing something. He starts walking on his own. So no longer in need. Now he can share. Now he can give the toys. Something is going on. In that level, there is a full sharing. From two years old and up, it's full level. In spirituality, or you can call it religion if you want, there is those three levels as well. A lot of time, people put the custom, religious custom, it's called. Here I have a jacket, I have on my shirt, and the, the beer grew up by itself, it's a yoffi, what a wonderful guy, right? Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. It works, are you sharing? Are you giving? Are you arbanim? Or are you betzim? That's a God, the show, Broadway show of how you dress and how you look, mean nothing if you don't share. For that reason, Hillel can say to the girl that come to convert, he said, Kol Torah kula, after lecha kamocha. Love the neighbor as thyself. It sounds so simple. It's the hardest thing to do. Love the neighbor as thyself. I have under dollar, let me give you 50. <laughs> love the neighbor as thyself. Or you want to see the rules of somebody come to your house. Somebody come to your house or a servant work for you, live in your house. And you have one blanket. Look at the halakha. Shulchan Aruch. And you have one blanket. You give the blanket to him. <laughs> if you look at all the ruling of the Torah, we're skipping the ruling. We only know about kasher, kasher. You have to watch what you're eating, kasher. But we don't watch what we're saying. The same mouth that eat kasher, the same mouth can speak as I want. Lashon hara, diba, lai, everything I want. This is the same lips, same area. To talk, it's okay, bad about people, but to eat, only kasher, hasa shalom, no. I washed the hasa, I took the lettuce, it was a salt water and this and that, and I'm perfect now. And the meat is a mahpud, ooh, I'm so kosher. Right? But when it's come to Loshon Ara, it's okay, no, no big deal, very big deal, very big deal. It's like killing. Loshon Ara is like you kill a person. So, my friend, the Kudazo is teaching us something. Develop yourself. This has come from you. How do you know you're being developed? Share. You have to share in a few ways. One of the ways is action. Action can be tzedakah, charity, looking around, where can I help? Help, say good words. If you don't think how to share every day, you are an egg. You're just an egg. You didn't develop yet. So don't expect life to get better for you. So if you find your soulmate, your soulmate is going to look like egg too. You have two eggs going on a date. <laughs> I don't know why people have expectation to meet somebody different than them. I have this idea. People come to see me. Why I cannot find somebody good? So, well, let's talk about you first. Are you perfect already? You, you perfect yourself to become Banim, to become the third level? No, no, no. I am Betim, but I'm looking to date Banim. I'm looking to date the third level, but I want to stay who I am. I want to stay Nefesh. I said, but you're not a fetus anymore. I said, oh, you're not be 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 anymore. You are mochim. You're supposed to share. No, no, no. I want to take. But yeah, it's a problem. It's happening in our society today. People are going into think the marriage. They check how much money that this guy make or how much did she make and what they do and all. This is betzim. This is betzim. This is for me, what I'm getting for me. The baya, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to stop being selfish. Spirituality is about not being selfish. And they're saying, I'm not sure I'm capable. Betsim. 
So find out if you're capable. Go ahead and find out. How would you know if you're capable? Find out if you're capable. Try. Go help some people. What's take the big deal to go in the Lenox Hills Hospital and wait there with a basket of uh, chocolate? And when people come out with their sick kids, you give them a chocolate. Is it a lot to do? Once a week you can do it. Get out of the Betzim and become Banim. Kashe. Going on the way to synagogue. Give people a joke, a Jewish joke on the way in so they will be happy. Kashe. There is thousand things to do. Thousand. But you first you got to think non-stop about sharing. Think about sharing. Look around the people you pray with. Are they smiling? No. Go to them. How are you? How are you doing? How is family? Kashe. So hard. Every one of us has to care. Has to care. And it doesn't matter, you know, I, I see many Rabbanim, uh, Gdolim, Torah, and knowing so many things. And they read you the halakha, the halakha of today, and the halakha of tomorrow, and the halakha, the halakha, the halakha. But uh, there is one halakha we're missing. Are we getting along with each other? Are we building a community, a group, to care for each other? That's a community. Community is not people who, as my friend, he's a funny guy. I want to bring him here one time. He's the funniest guy. So I said, where are you praying? He said, you know where I'm praying. I'm praying in a shul. I'm sitting in the back. I don't bother them. They don't bother me. Life is good. But that's not the community. I want to bother you, and I want you to bother me. Because I, I, I care for you. So how are you? And you good. I have this problem. I have this. We, that's getting out of Betzim. And we must do it in Elul, guys. We must. When it's written in Rosh Hashanah, Kehui Machem Devarim, Veshuvu El Hashem. Take with you thing and do tshuva by going to Hashem. How many people you bring with you to Rosh Hashanah? You have a chance now. How many people you bring in, not to pray only? Everybody, people pray, come, come, come to pray. How many people you bring in your mind that you care about this year? You care for real. For real, not, eh, how are you? Eh, I saw your picture on Facebook. You look great. I care for you. No, 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 no. Care, care. You know, care. How are you, Bemet? My Maneshama, what's going on inside? It's easy. It's easy. And don't tell me, I'm sorry, but I don't have money now. Eh, take two chairs. There's many park here. Take two chairs. Sit together. Talk. I was walking on Sunday around the area of 38 and 7th Avenue. And I saw a beggar who can hardly walk. And then I saw a lady come and she brought two seats together. It was smell really bad. Like bad, like eggs, but not good one. And this seat, she bought him food. Everybody can buy food. She did something more. And I was jealous, spiritually jealous. She put the food, she put food for herself, she started eating with him. And they have a conversation. And Debbie and me and Luca said, why didn't we do it? She said, you jealous? I said, I'm very jealous. This is good mom. This is a very smart. This is the mitzvah of giving them the food. It's a mitzvah of making chaver. This is mitzvah of getting out of your comfort. This is every, everything is in that arena. Think about it, my friend. It's easy to share. We just, the Yetzirah, if you mention Yetzirah, is telling us, oh, it's the headache, I don't have time. I don't have the head for it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. So, five minutes a day, pick up the phone and call to somebody, you get nothing from them, nothing. They will never care about you, ever, and be nice to them. This is the test. This is the milchama. I want to take you to another section here. They teach us how to go about it. How to do that. How to go about it. So it says, How do we become that my giving, my giving will be motivated, that I will be motivated to give, that it will be as if I just received the best dessert, as if I best, I receive all the compliment. How do I get them? מבלה הכל בלי ראשית, בלי אחרית של רבותו, אין קץ ותכלית, אלא הקושי בדבר הוא כי ערך עומות אינו תלוי באחד, אלא בסביבה. It's said to be able to get to that moment of appreciating the creator, and by appreciating the creator we understand that sharing mitzvah 
is important mitzvah. It depends on the rumemut, it depends on the cleaving. But the cleaving is not depends on the individual. That's a problem. The, the cleaving, meaning to be able to see the good in the creator, it's a erech or rumemut and not talui by yachid, ella basviva. It depends on the community you are in. Lemashal, example, afilu ima adam male ma'alot tovot. A person can be a perfect tzaddik. Im lo yachshivu asviva v'lo yachabdu adam kaze, tamid imatze tamid neche ruach v'lo yuchal litgaot b'ma'alotav. Let's say you are a great person. You're a great, great person. You're capable, you know Torah, uh, you know Kabbalah, you, you painting, you what else. Funny gift you have. But you're in the wrong place. Your growth will not take a place. Your society define if you will be blossom or not. Some of you, I'm sure, in one point in your life, maybe now, you're stuck. You feel like you're stuck. It's not working. You're stuck. Could be you, you live in Brooklyn and it's not good. You move to Queens and it's still not good. You move to, I don't know, Manhattan, eh, not moving. You move to New Jersey, it's not moving, but and then again, it's not working. As viva, the environment define how good you're going to bring out your gift. Translate. If a person is, a, is not good, terrible painting, play piano with mistake, uh, what else? Oh, the, the terrible cook, not good. But the environment will tell him, listen, we eat a lot of food, but you, ah, you are one of a kind. You are unbelievable. You are woo, the best. You know, there is, a, there is a different way to look at life. And I, 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 when I meet people, I mean, the best thing about meeting people is you learn from them. People think that I can teach them when they meet me privately, but actually I learn from them. It's this exchange. They teach me, I teach them. And the beautiful thing about people is there is two ways that they look at life. One look at life about what exists now and what look at life in a very different way. And it's sometimes difficult to do. You know, the half cup full or empty. Like, what do you see? You see the water, you see the empty. You gotta see both. I mean, really, you wanna be a capitalist, you gotta see both. Because you gotta see the fulfillment, what you achieve in life. But don't be lazy, you still have to fulfill the rest. But don't see only empty and be depressed. You gotta learn to see both. It's hard. It's hard to do it. But what is he saying here? A person is not doing well. So I went one time to uh, Shabbat. It doesn't matter, you don't need to know the name. And Baruch Hashem, the food there was terrible. It's, I don't find the, but, but like terrible, not only flavor. Like I'm talking about the potato was not cooked yet. I don't know if you ever eat a non-cooked potato. It's the, the sound like apple, it's like Chicken. Almost alive, Baruch Hashem. The fish still swimming. So Baruch Hashem, I'm looking. I say, wow, 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 Eliyahu, this is, this is your nightmare, Baruch Hashem. Food and me is a, an issue. Me and food is my tikkun, is my issue. So I'm looking at the food, the food look at me, Baruch Hashem, what I'm all seeing, I'm all seeing. Baruch Hashem, I'm And <laughs> it was many years ago, guys. Hashem, forgive me. So, so her husband, this was the best part. Her husband, <laughs> he look at the food. <laughs> the way he speak, he has a very funny voice. Honey, <laughs> it's amazing how, how the food came so good. And I'm like, what do I do now? It's, I do, you know? And next to me, there is a lady. God bless her. Teach me American manners. You're cutting the potato and you move it to the left and then you move it to the right. You move it up, you move it to you, and you keep moving it on the plate. I said, but I'm not eating it. I said, oh my God, so it's okay. You have to learn. You move it, this, move it, make sure the potato, this piece, that piece. I went through that course, American course, how to behave. So I get out of it somehow. But I was very impressed by the husband. A year later, I'm meeting the couple and the woman become like, I was afraid to eat. <laughs> she become a cook. 
but I never saw dishes like this, like a chef. And I'm looking, I, I, it was a lesson for me. I don't know if it's a lesson for you. The environment of her husband telling her how great she is, all of a sudden brought out a person that I didn't even know exist. He took the betzim, listen carefully, now we connect to what we said before. He took the egg, he developed it into gozalim, into chicks, and then he developed into boys, into, into banim. A development came from nefesh ruach neshama, or if you want, ibur yenika mochin. He was able to elevate his own wife into a level that never. What we learn from that? What is Ravash like right to us here? כי ערך החשיבות והרוממות ניתנה לגמרי לרשות הסביבה. Your value not depends on how great you are. Is how great the סביבה. The סביבה means the environment will say you are. Now you know why Facebook, Instagram, and the other one, TikTok. The TikTok is so powerful. Why? Because the people addicted to it. The whole value. The whole value of who you are depends on Ah, 30 likes, ah, yeah, yeah. what's wrong with me? What's wrong? Oh, 3,000 likes, oh, what did I do right here? Why? Because the value of who you are depends on the sviva. Now it's going spiritual, it's going from a religious point of view. When we see our environment don't care about spirituality or religion, if you live in an environment that people make fun of spirituality, make fun of lecture, make fun of Torah, make fun of everything, you can overcome that. And that's why the person who is in the wrong environment cannot get to the level that he need to get. And because the person is living in a neighborhood or in an environment or in a house, that there is nothing there. And of course, this person spiritually has to fall. And he cannot act what we call nachat ruach. Nachat ruach meaning that you are receiving a gift from God, but you know it's for the sake of sharing. Meaning, I receive a blessing for you, Hashem, because I know how much pleasure is giving you, Hashem. Not because I want the gift, because I know how much pleasure you have to give it to me. Because the Creator only loves you. If the Creator only loves you, then everything that you ask for is what? It's already in plan to be giving to you. You just have to know how to connect to it. You have to know how to dial the right number, God, right? 1-800 or the other 1-800 or 900 or whatever exists out there. You know, what is today? There is still the 900 thing. I don't know. All, the, all those things that you can connect. So the creator created the fulfillment before you even ask. But in the moment you ask for it, you create this affinity. Why? Because you want it. He want, he's all giving. You are all receiving. It can never meet. It can never meet each other. But if you said, he want to give you 100% and you say, I don't want it. But I want it because I know it's giving you a pleasure. So now I'm receiving it. My receiving will be turning into sharing as well. If my receiving turning into sharing, there is affinity. at ama. There is affinity. It's unique. It's very important. And that's why a lot of time, it doesn't matter how religious you are. It's matter your sharing level. That's what you need to practice every day. You can be religious in yeshivot, kolelim, this, that. It's not going to work. Not going to work. I had today the pleasure to talk to our 20 kolelim, 25 kolelim in Sderot and Etivot. I don't know if you know that area. It's where the Baba Sali is buried. So we have a, a kolel that, that uh, I'm, I'm helping with the lecture. I don't want to say I'm the teacher. There's a wonderful teacher, Rabbi Uda Ben Haimo. God bless his soul. So we talk, we talk about a lot of those things. And I said, it doesn't matter how, how long is your peot. I care for you to reach out and reach out to every human being you meet and be kind and be nice. If you didn't do it, my friend, we missed the whole point. And remember, the God want to give you everything. But if you want it, you disconnect yourself. If you want it because you know he's giving you that pleasure and you said, God, you want to give me that pleasure of soulmate, of money, of beauty, of whatever you're looking for. I want to fulfill the mitzvah by receiving it to give you the pleasure to give it to me. If you remember that rules, you, your life will change. Not tomorrow, tonight. Don't practice it tomorrow. You practice it tomorrow, it's over. Tonight you have to practice it. Tonight.
after you get out of five minutes after the lecture over, get your phone and start practice how to share. Second, practice how to share. Second, how to receive. Whatever you want, make a list of everything you want before Rosh Hashanah. What is you want? Make a list. Then choose from that list only one thing. One. That one thing, you have to believe it already exists. So the reason you want it, it's only to give a pleasure to the creator to give it to you. You're doing it for the creator. You don't do it because you want it. It's almost like a wonderful person who loves you when I give you uh, food. I give you, I share with you a story. Maybe it will stay with you this way. Poor man, rich man, they meet on 47th Street and 6th Avenue. The rich man is very wealthy now. He wants to share. So you go to the poor man, he's in the corner, say, come on, I want to take you for a shower, you know, cut your hair, beard, everything, let's take care of you for a few days in the hotel. The poor man said, I don't want it. I said, stupid, he's going around, looking for another poor man, couldn't find. So he go back to him, he said, come on, I can take you in this, I said, I don't want it. He go the next day, try again. After three days, he's asking him, what's wrong with you? I want to give you food, I want to take care of you. He said, I don't want it. Then the rich man, he started crying, he's sitting there, he said, can you do me please a favor and let me take care of you? Let me, let me buy you food. Let me take care of you. So, okay. If it's for you, I will come with you. That's called Nachat Ruach Liotro. Now you understand the mitzvah. You want to act exactly the same way with God. You want nothing. But you know how much pleasure it's given the rich man to give you what you want. Remember, if you work like that, anything you ever wanted in your life, it's happening. But you don't start tonight, it's over. You wait one hour after the lecture, it's like it's gone. Because what I share with you is not a regular Torah. It's called Sitre Torah. This is called, what I share with you is Sitre Torah. It doesn't matter how much you're going to remember it from a point of uh, uh, logic, you will have to forget it. The angel will not let you remember it. Remember what I did? Try, try not to do it. You see, tomorrow you're going to wake up. You're not going to remember that. It will be gone. Especially if you're Jewish. Our memory is short, Baruch Hashem. We don't forget, we don't remember. Yesterday we had the blood flag, uh, uh, the, the, the ten plagues. Blood, frog, this, Makat Bechorot. We're getting out of Egypt. Yamsuf, the Red Sea is open. Woo! Everything. We reach the other end. Hey, we're missing the zucchini, the onion, and the watermelon. Hey, what's going on? What happened? We forget. We just... Forget, this is who we are. This is who we are. We know how to complain very well, and we have a short memory, Baruch Hashem. It doesn't mean we're bad. It's just we need to learn to behave different. Kabbal. A few things, and then we're going to go to a short meditation. So for me here, to understand that concept, so we need to understand, we need to understand why Moshe Rabbeinu, why Moses is buried outside of Eretz Israel. Why? The Zohar asks in Kitetze, why is Moses buried out of the Eretz Israel? And look what Rabbi Shimon said in Pasuk Pei, uh, verse 80, in Raya Memna, Kitetze. When it's written that nobody knows where Moses is buried, whoa, for those people who their heart is closed. The one that are blind, that they cannot see. They don't fully understand the burial of Moses. When you ask for mercy for God in Parashat Vayetchanan 515 times to get into Israel, and you were worried not to be buried outside. I'm only translating, so don't get hurt by me. And those stupid ones, are you Omrim? The one you talk about stupid one who read the Torah this way. He doesn't talk about stupid one who don't know the Torah at all. The religious one, the, no, the one who knows the Torah well. Elu the one who read that. Are you Omrim? Moses was afraid to die. Moses was not a human being, he was like half angel. Was he afraid of death? So why, why did he let Moses bury in Eretz Israel? And look what the answer is. Kiata. If Moses will not be buried outside of Israel, we will never make it out of the exile. Question, my friend, is why? 
And that's connect to what I said at the beginning. Eggs, chicks, and sons. Moses developed himself to the full development. No human can do it ever again. No human. From Moses till Moses end. Nobody can do that development of the soul. If Moses will enter Israel, all the other people will be in the level of either eggs or chicks. The very low level. The frequency is very low. That level has to die around Moshe Rabbeinu. Israel is a full development, not now. Now Israel is not full development. Israel is now, what we call Israel is now in egg situation. Israel is called egg. Doesn't matter how the army gonna win. And those of you who've been soldier in the Israeli army, no, the army never wins, Hashem win. Those of you who were uh, infantry or fighter, no, uh, only Hashem that win. I mean, if you look at the army and you look at that, I know what they let you read. You read, oh yes, we have stone tank and F-35, and yes, we know what we're doing. No, 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 no. The miracle that happened in Israel uh, is beyond our understanding. You go from 1973, uh, if you know Yom Kippur, if you look at the, at the information, just read the information, what exactly went wrong there. Did you know that they sent about 72, coincidence, 72 helicopters to the land of Israel, crossing the Red Sea, 72 helicopters, exactly. And everything went wrong there. They, they miscalculating things. They miscalculated everything. So you want to tell me, oh, 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 oh. no. Hashem, the creator, is helping. Moshe Rabbeinu, Israel is an egg. Egg situation. It's looking for people to develop it. That's what Debbie and me doing every day, talking to our yeshivot guys to study Kabbalah and to study Zohar in the yeshivot. Baruch Hashem, it's been developed a lot now. It's for the last year. This is second year already. That's why you're going to Israel, what you're looking for? Shwarma, falafel, hummus. Is that what you're going to Israel? <laughs> hey, let's take picture in the Kotel. The Yofi. The same, nothing changed. 2,000 years, we are an egg. Still an egg. But the Mikdash Nivna, temple was built. Is it still a hatred between people? Yes, there is. So what changed? What changed? No, egg. Hey, you have longer peot, Baruch Hashem. Nice beard that grow by itself. Right? Beautiful. Everything is so nice. It's external. It's egg. We're looking for banim. We're looking for a real development. Moshe Rabbeinu, if he enter Israel now, everybody has to die. Because his level is so high, it will not fit. That's why Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm burying you outside. I'm sorry, Moses. If you enter, it will be a problem. But I let your number one student, Yoshua, to get in. Yoshua was the Levana. Moshe was the Chama. What is Chama? Hama is a boyer, it's ash, it's fire. Motzi Hama in Artika, to get the sun out of his wallet. But moon, moon has its time, up and down, up and down, Mitchadesh, period, up and down, that's allowed. So you can live in Israel like this. That's why there is, uh, if you study psychology, those of you who study psychology, there is what we call Jerusalem syndrome, or the Messiah syndrome in Jerusalem. People who live in Jerusalem longer than six months start to develop a craziness that they are the Messiah. I don't know if you know that. You should read about that later on on Google. Yeah, it's an amazing disease. Jerusalem uh, Messiah syndrome. They walk in Jerusalem. I met a guy like this, by the way. I met, I met a guy like this from Brazil. As they walk in, they start, what? He was not born in Israel. Not born in Israel. Even if he's born in Israel. Oh, the one who born in Israel have that syndrome from the time they're born. That's a different, that's worse. The people who live in Israel, these are, I'm Israeli. When we poor Israeli, when we came to America, we invented America. That's what they teach us in school. We invented everything here. We thought America is smaller than Israel. When you come in, eh, the ego of Israeli has to be reduced a little bit. And then it will be a place for God. But if the Israeli still have ego, there is no room for God there. There is room for shawarma. There is room for fight. There is room for hummus. There is room for labane, sabir. That's it. We're very good at that. Kadaif, we, we're very good like this. But there is no room for God. You know, as the Baal Shem Tov once say, he went, Baal Shem Tov once went to a, a Jewish school, yeshiva. I said, come in, come see the biggest yeshiva. So the Baal Shem Tov said, I'm sorry, I cannot walk in. There is too much praise and too much, bless you, Torah here. There is too much Torah, there is too much prayer. And they tell him, of course, it's a place of Torah and, 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 and pray. He said to them, I know, but a real place of prayer and Torah, the Torah and the prayer don't stay here. It's go to heaven. If you really pray well, if you really study Torah well, the prayer doesn't stay in this level. It's go up. If it still stay in this level, something went wrong. 
So the last thing, Moses, my friend, reached the highest level of a human being. Our goal in this parasha, in Kitetse, our goal is to get out of our laziness and to look for how do I become banim. And then loti kacha em banim. Then the mother will never leave you. Shechina will never leave you. But if you're going into your life, I did enough, and this entitlement energy in me, then you are betzim. Who is entitled? The fetus. is entitled to food from his mother. It's a fetus. But if you are already standing on your two legs, you're entitled for nothing. You're entitled to one thing. Share. Help. Guide. Say thank you. Give compliment like the husband with the, with the wife who tell her how great is the food. Are you capable of doing it? Now, some of you say, but it's a lie. Well, go for the Gemara. The study from the Gemara. There is Machloket in the Gemara, Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai. You don't want to know the Machloket, the argument? If you go into a, to a, a, a wedding and the bride is not beautiful, the bride, the kala is not gorgeous. Do you tell her you're ugly? Do you tell her kala na'a hasuda? This is a shela. It's a shela in the Talmud. Bet Hillel said, you have to say na'a kala hasuda. You have to say the beautiful bride and she's tzadeket, she's zero. But Shamayim says, disagree with it, it's a lie. And we go by Bet Ilel. Because the words of a human being, you don't believe in your word, your word can create things. Create. You create anything with the words, negative or positive. You can create. Some people say the word, man, I don't have money. You're not going to have money. You're not going to have money soon. It's going to get worse. Some people say, ah, I'm so rich. I'm the richest. Why am I the richest in the world? Money's coming to you now. How do you talk? How do you speak? What type of language? I'm lonely. What's wrong with being lonely a little bit? What's wrong? I'm lonely a little bit. I have my time. Ta -da -ta -di -di -di. I can dance alone in the kitchen, cook my potato. Doo -doo -doo -da -di -da -da -da. I am so happy. And all of a sudden you meet. Because if you are lonely, and miserable, you're going on a date. Who are you going to meet? Also lonely and miserable person. It's, a, it's called the laws of affinity. So lonely and miserable date with a lonely and miserable date, you now get a marry in a lonely and miserable place and then you give birth to lonely and miserable children too. And you don't know why is the family, what's wrong with my family? What did I do wrong? That's a shidduch. That's a shidduch. But Mabaya, what's the problem? I didn't work on me. Forget the word you. Go around and being able to be happy. This Shabbat, uh, Yosef invited me to go to a shul in the Upper West. Very nice people. And you can see that the people that belong to the place are Samech uh, Bechelko. You know, people are happy with, the, with, the, with whatever it is. And the beautiful thing about it, if you celebrate one thing in your life, which is good, celebrate one thing, you are now invited the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, everything is happening. But if you are miserable about the one thing that's not working, that one thing is not going to stay alone. It's going to bring all his friend. All the negativity exists in the market, follow the one. If you say, I don't know why I don't have money. Oh, I don't have money. Money is coming. Pain is coming. This is coming. But if you say, I don't know why I'm so blessed. Why am I so blessed? Why am I so blessed? I remember... Years ago, when I moved to New York, I used to live in Queens. So, you know, you don't have money. You come from Israel. So I used to take the subway and I used to have a briefcase. And I was sitting on the briefcase because no place to sit. It's not the subway today is less packed than it was before. In the 90s, the subway was packed at 8 a.m. So I remember I sit on there and I used to be so appreciative of, of my luggage. I'm, I'm, I'm touching the luggage. I said, thank you for holding me. Don't break on me right now. And I'm sitting on the luggage and I'm very happy that I have that seat. The point from that thing, it gave birth to so many things after that in my life. Everything opened up. Everything opened up in my life after that. When you look for one thing, take one thing in your life. Don't start tomorrow, start tonight. One thing in your life, make a list of one thing and make sure that you appreciate this one thing, then it brings more. You have one friend in your life you appreciate? Make sure they know about it tonight. They know about it, more are coming. Everything that you are happy about Pronounce it, say it, celebrate it. Don't hold it back. Last thing, again, to be different than eggs and chicks. Be banim. 
when you love someone, don't tell them, hey, it's nice to see you. No, no, no. Spend love on them. It's almost like if your battery is about to finish, you give them every love you can. All the love that you can give to give that person. Don't hold back. I see a lot of time people have said to me, I'm not sure if he's into me or she's into me. So I don't want to tell them. Tell why, 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 What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I can't stand you. They're going to tell you, I can't stand you. Baruch Hashem. Do you believe in Kadosh Baruch Hu? Do you believe in Hashem? If Hashem plan on it not to work, it's not going to work. So what, your embarrassment will rule your life? You're not going to say, I love you to someone you like because the embarrassment might happen? So you invite the embarrassment, you're going to block yourself. Develop yourself to be who you are. Stop worrying about what people think of you. Because that's a killer. You're losing knowing who you are. And it depends on the sviva too much, the environment. Choose a better environment then. Build yourself a community. Gather people around you. I want to be in this community. I want to be the community that we help each other to be better. Not we kill each other, we bury each other. We can help each other. That's what it's all about. We are here to help each other develop themselves. And in the same time, give a chance for the person to have their freedom. My friend, one person this week that you're going to give all the love. We're going to practice it now to meditation. I'm going to take you to a meditation, right? And we're going to practice how to do it in a second. Right? Nobody skipping it. Okay, I need you to be quiet a little bit. If you're tired, make sure you breathe fast, like about nine times if you can. You know how to do it. And take it out right away. Don't do the regular one I teach you every week. Not the slow one. Make nine fast one. Don't let it sit too long in your lungs. So in and out, in and out, nine times. You might feel a headache, it's okay. Not a big deal, it's been the oxygen level went up. And now the tenth one, do it slowly. Hold it. And then exhale, slowly. Good, good, good. Now you relax. I want you to think of the name of that person that you love. Think about that name. <laughs> Think about the name of the person that you love. Think about their name, please. I want you to choose the color purple around their body, please. The color purple around their body, please. Like a light around them. Surrounding them with the color purple. You can still see them through the color, but they're surrounded by the color purple. See yourself standing in front of a piece of paper. You can have a pen, pencil, ink, and you're going to write a letter to them with their name first. And you're going to say, Dear, the name. Write their name and slowly, slowly write down what you want to tell them. Don't hold back. Everything that you want to tell them, just write it down. Put these letters in the envelope and close your eyes once you see yourself that close your eyes in your meditation and teleport in your mind whatever you thought in that letter into their mind. Focus 
when you're breathing now, inhale and exhale three times. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you for everybody. And Tom, 